The economic benefits of converging network layers in optical transport networks are powerful, with some estimates suggesting 35 to 50 percent savings in core router network capex by allowing layer 3 to drive the optimization of optical networks. Converging network layers also offers a new range of services and revenue opportunities allowing end users and service providers to dynamically set up optimal paths based on traffic patterns, quality of service commitments, and time of day effects. But this level of optimization is constrained by the inability of the optical transport layer to flexibly respond to the requirements of the packet layer. While new technologies such as CDC Rotoms offer the needed level of flexibility, they are not deployed widely enough to support implementation of multi-layer optimization. Also adding to the problem is that real service provider networks consist of islands of equipment from multiple vendors, including legacy systems, without reconfiguration capabilities. In this presentation, we're going to show you a solution that solves these challenges and supports network-wide deployment of multi-layer optimization today using optical circuit switching. The networking industry has known for a long time that if you simply look at capital cost and operational cost on a per bit basis, it's much less expensive to switch network traffic in the optical domain. It's more costly to switch in the electrical domain, and routing of course is the most expensive place to handle switching and forwarding of information. So, where possible, it makes sense to switch at the optical layer. But in order to be able to make choices about the most appropriate layer to switch in any given traffic scenario, there are two basic prerequisites that must be in place. First, there has to be control plane visibility across the network layers, and with SDN we're getting there. Second, all the network layers must be able to flexibly reconfigure capacity to support traffic patterns in the most optimal way. In an ideal scenario, the control plane would allow the optical layer topology and capacity to be reconfigured in the response to the de demands of the layer 3 network. For example, a large data center might need a high capacity, low latency link for a short period to facilitate a data migration or backup between data centers across the metro or wide area. That service could be provisioned economically and on demand for the needed time period and then shut down. So let's illustrate this. In this example, we show two metro networks or data centers connected over a wide area transport network. The transport network layer is shown below in the blue cloud, and sitting above is a traditional IP network with metro and core IP MPLS connected. In this example, we want to set up a high bandwidth, highly persistent data connection between hosts in the two metro areas for a large data migration. Now, standard procedure in the way networks are built today would likely lead to a circuit that takes the path illustrated in red, constantly bouncing up and down between the optical transport layer and the core routers. In this case, we see an end-to-end -end IP or Ethernet service that is chewing up a lot of capacity on several intermediate routers simply to move the package from the metro on the left to the metro on the right. There's no fan out occurring, nothing's happening in the core network other than IP packet transport. This is an excellent example of very inefficient use of network resources and it also degrades performance because of the additional latency added by the intermediate router hops. Now with SDN, we have the ability to start placing policies on traffic. In this same example, an express optical layer path is much more cost and performance efficient. Transporting this traffic flow over the optical transport network and moving it directly without consuming ports up and down on the routed layer is a much better utilization of resources. The technology to achieve exactly this with a flexible optical layer has existed for several years with colorless directionless and colorless directionless contentionless rotoms. But the multi-layer optimization vision hasn't been realized yet. There are two main reasons for this. First is that CD and CDC technology is not ubiquitously deployed in transport networks, 
and without this, layer convergence doesn't work. Where CDC solutions are deployed, they typically exist as separate vendor and geographical domain islands without the ability to optimize between them. Secondly, service providers have substantial investments in legacy network equipment with limited or no reconfigurability that will remain in service for many years. So let's go back to our example network to illustrate this. So what if the express network path available between the two endpoints is on a legacy network path or a separate vendor island at the, that the edge routers are not connected to? The routers simply have no physical means to reach the available express path. This is a problem and illustrates one of the main reasons that multi-layer convergence is not widely realized in service provider networks. There is a solution. Optical circuit switching solves this challenge by providing flexible optical layer on-off ramps between different equipment and network domains. Adding optical circuit switches at the edges of the metro and wide area networks allows the multi-layer control plane to access and select resources from any domain or vendor, including a legacy network. So in our example network, the SDN controller can orchestrate the optimum path onto the legacy network through the optical circuit switches. This effectively allows service providers and data center operators to virtualize and control all of the disparate resources in their optical transport networks. The optical network capacity becomes a pool of resources. It doesn't matter which vendor's equipment is in use or whether it's a new CDC system or a legacy system. The OCS at the network edge allows any client side resource to be connected to any network resource and supports network wide SDN control of the optical layer. SDN management of the network is achieved with or without OpenFlow and REST APIs on all of the transport systems in the network. The optical layer is reconfigured through a coordination of switching elements on the CD and CDC rotums and the optical circuit switch nodes. Optical circuit switching under global SDN control provides flexible optical layer on-off ramps between vendor and network domain boundaries and client-side equipment. With everything under SDN control, the entire transport network, including all vendor and geographical domains, is virtualized as a giant optical switch. Any router port can request an optical connection to any other router port in the network. The optical transport network can make the connections on demand. And importantly, it works across CD, CDC rotums, and legacy network deployments. The result is real-time flexibility that the packet layer can take advantage of. It's also now possible to use holistic analytics to look for network congestion points and reroute traffic to routes with more available capacity. This means that the substantial operational and economic benefits of multi-layer optimization can be fully realized today, independent of network and vendor domain boundaries and also across legacy networks. So just to wrap up and summarize, service providers and data center operators are aware of the need to add flexibility to the transport network so that circuit endpoints are optimized to meet bandwidth demand and eliminate expensive intermediate layer two and layer three hops. This kind of multi-layer optimization can only happen though if flexibility is ubiquitous across the MAN and the WAN. This is not the case in today's networks, which consist of separate vendor and geographical domains, in addition to completely fixed legacy networks. Adding optical circuit switching under SDN control at the edges of the network and between network domain boundaries provides the real-time flexibility needed to support multi-layer network optimization, and it does so without being constrained by network and vendor domains. Thank you.